Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I want to take this moment to welcome you all to this training. Um, it is a medical missionary training, and we know that uh, healthy cooking is part of the medical missionary work. And uh, that is the reason why we're here, because uh, we want to have people who are going to go out there and do this work in the hygienic restaurants that uh, God will provide for us. So before we start, I want to pray and then we continue. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we humble ourselves before thee this moment. We want to thank you, Lord, because you are here with us. Thank you for guiding us to this place. And thank you for this work that is before us. We humble ourselves at thy feet, that we may learn skills, knowledge, and wisdom. For this we have been told they come from thee. Lord, we are here. We want to learn how to cook. We want to learn how to present palatable and yet simple and sweet meals uh, before our people, before the world, that this art, this branch of work, may do a work that you have called us to do in these last days, that is bringing unity to your kingdom, opening the eyes of the blind, and letting, letting more have even the help that has been taken away from the unhealthful ways of living. We thank you and we pray that you may be with us for this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, just to begin, my name is uh, Remy Wilberfuss, and uh, I'll be taking you through the part of cooking, and that is the healthful cooking expos, and we have so many things that we are going to learn in the course of two weeks. And so today we are starting with uh, the simple foods that we know. The reason why we are doing this is because we want people to learn. We want to have uh, simple foods. We want to have health meals before our table. We want to break that mono monotony that we have been having in our homes. We know those uh, traditional cultures that we have been brought up with. You know, many people know that uh, the only food that we know is, uh, like in Kenya right now, we know it is uh, ugali, vegetables, and what else? Rice and some beans or some green grams. And uh, if you go try your best to present something different, maybe it is uh, some flat bread that is chapati and some stew, and we are done. And you find that in many homes, this is what is re recycled each and every day. You find that uh, today, ugali, tomorrow, maybe rice, and the next day, ugali, and then year round, year come, year go, that is what people feed on. And uh, from many research that has been done, we know that uh, many uh, diseases that people are suffering, we are told the causes or their origin or their root is from our kitchen, is from our tables. And that's why we want to turn this narrative around. We want to introduce something better because these are the things that God gave us. You know, we have so many plants, we have so many vegetables, we have so many foods that uh, God provided for us. But it is so unfortunate that we use so little. We use so little. And the much that we, be, we should be using, the much that even our body needs, we do not use it. And uh, the reason why we are here is because we are told this. I'm going to read some two quotes before we start. I'm going to read something from a uh, uh, call to... CME, CME that is six three, CME that is six point three. We are told that greater efforts should be put forth to educate the people in the principles of health reform. More cooking schools should be established, and some should labor from house to house giving instruction 
in the art of cooking wholesome food. Parents and their children should learn to cook more simply than is usually done. The preparation of so many varied and complex dishes so absorb the time and attention of many that are that are, are disqualified to teach the truth as it is in Jesus Christ. So this is a, a call that uh, we should have greater efforts in establishing cooking schools, in uh, laying the foundations of the principles of health reform. Why? Because this health reform, we are, we are told, it has made to be a health reform. People are using it uh, in a way that is not right. And we are told that parents should teach their children. And you know that before you start teaching your children, you have as a parent, as a mother, to learn the art of cooking. You must learn those skills of cooking. And uh, as you learn, we are told now we have to pass the information, the knowledge to the uh, next generation, that is our children and the people uh, that we meet along the way. The next quote I'm going to read, is from uh, Child Guidance. Child Guidance, that is uh, CD 372, paragraph one. You can just, if you find time, just go through the whole chapter, the whole topic. It uh, talks so much about that reform and uh, principles of health reform. We are told this, the science of cooking is an essential art. The science of cooking is not a small matter. This art should be regarded as the most valuable of all the arts because it is so closely connected with life. You see that the science of cooking is not a small matter. Why? Because we are told it is closely connected with life. Why is it closely connected with life? And how is it closely connected with life? Like cooking the food that you present on the, on the table. How is it connected with life? You are going to say that. It comes out to say, you should receive more attention for in order to make good blood, the system requires what? Good food. And we are told perfect blood circulation equals to perfect air. Uh, perfect health. And we are also told that uh, blood is what? Blood is life. And if this blood is life, and we are told that, uh, we are told that uh, it should receive more attention for in order to make a good blood, the system requires good food. The foundation of that which keeps people in health is the medical missionary work of good cooking. So one of the reasons why we are here, we want to learn to make good foods, good foods that will make good blood in us. And that blood is going to give us good life. We want that perfect health. We want that to be uh, all around Christians, all around in mind. We, are, we have perfect health of mind. We have good spiritual health. We know because when our physical health is impaired, our mental and our spiritual health is also then what? It is impaired. And so it all begins from the stomach. It all begins from the kitchen. It all begins from uh, the table. In another quote, she says that uh, many mothers, many graves of the children who have died of a young age, it is written, they are died of what? Of poor cooking. That there are so many children who have rested, not because it was for their time to rest, not because they were sick, sick of uh, just a natural disease, but because of the food that their mothers presented at the table. And you see how serious that is. The next paragraph says, often health reform is meant health reform by unpalatable preparation of food. The lack of knowledge regarding healthful cookery must be remedied before health reform is success. Good cooks are few. Many, many mothers need to take lessons in cooking that they may set before the family well-prepared, neatly served food. So it is not just about cooking. It is also about how you present the food. 
because you can cook some nice meals, but the way you present them at your plate, the way you bring them at the table, someone may just not want even to test, not want even to try because how the food looks, no matter how you try to convince the person that this food smells good, this food tastes good, but if the person cannot see that, the person may not even have an interest of uh, wanting to try that. The next, the last paragraph is uh, 372 paragraph five. The food can be prepared simply and healthily, but it requires a skill to make it both palatable and nourishing. In order to learn how to cook, women should study and then patiently reduce what they learn to practice. And now this is where the challenge is. I know some of us, we have attended such training like this, but the funny thing or the unfortunate thing is that we have never tried anything. Why? Because we do not have that determination. We do not want to slowly uh, change or uh, take what we have been learning in theory to practice. Now, if you want to establish and work in hygienic restaurants, first of all, we are told that we must do what? Practice. Even the, 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 the food we are going to prepare today, it may look so simple, but at the time you are going to try it, you may bring out something different. Are you going to give up? No, you're not told to give up. But what are you going to do? Try again, try again until you perfect the art. And this goes, this applies to all the arts we have out there. The people who do carpentry, the people who do machinery, they have trained, they have practiced until they have perfected the art. And we have been told that cooking is not a small matter. Don't assume it. Don't uh, uh, take it as just any other duty in life. This is a duty, a call of highest order that we have been given as Seventh-day Adventists as medical missionaries. Someone who is standing in the pulpit, you cannot compare that person to someone who is working in the kitchen. The strength the person gets to stand in the pulpit comes from the, 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 the work that the person is in the kitchen doing. You see children moving around while sharp, uh, energetic, it is the work of the mother in the kitchen. And so the highest work in the medical missionary Yes, all the works are essential and important, but the work of cooking, the work of preparing nice, simple, palatable meals, it is a great work. And so lastly, continue to say, <coughs> people are suffering because they will not take the trouble to do this. I say to start, it is time for you to rouse your dormant energies and inform yourselves. Do not think that the time wasted, which is devoted to obtaining a thorough no knowledge and experience in the preparation of helpful, palatable food, no matter how long an experience you have had in cooking, if you still have responsibilities, uh, responsibilities of a family, it is your duty to learn how to care for them properly. And it continues to say so much about the foods that we cook. And so one thing I want to encourage us is that God is willing to give us that wisdom. God is willing to give us the skills. You know, cooking is very easy. I find it easy because it is something that you use your mind. You use your mind when you have that interest in cooking. What we lack is that interest. We don't want to develop that interest. We do not have that passion. If you develop passion in cooking and you have the interest, the next thing is to push yourself. You need that effort. Even when you feel you don't need it, you just have to. There are some people who have ovens in their homes, but they even go finish some another year that never used to. Or if they try maybe twice a year. Why? Because someone, hey, I have to make the bread. The whole day I'll be baking. No, making rice, just boiling rice and making the tea is easy for me than to do that. You see? And we deprive our families of that good health, good blood because of our laziness, because of our, we want to encourage those dormant energies. This is what God is discouraging. If you want to go and work, establish hygienic restaurants, you must 
push yourself, you must cultivate passion in cooking. Otherwise, there is nothing you do. The only thing you do is that you will be coming for training every year, every moment, learning some things that you never practice. And the good thing about the good or bad thing about these things is that when you learn something and you don't practice, what happens? The Bible says, even the little you have is taken away from you because you're not making use of it. And that's why even the talents that God gave us, he has taken them away because we don't make use of them. So if you want to succeed in cooking and be that good cook, push yourself, have that interest and pray God to give you skills. Practice every day, just have a recipe. Think something in your mind. By the way, if you try to, to have that passion and interest, every day you will have something to try. And don't fear to try that you make something that people will not eat. No, just make something people will not eat, throw it away and try again until you perfect something. That is how people learn. You see how children run? Sometimes they break things, and then sometimes they mend them until they grow to learn that this is done this way. And that is how we will be learning. And so I thank God because of this line of work, because it is the line of work that opens your mind. It is a line of work that brings you closer to your Savior. It is a line of work that is connected to the salvation of souls because you are, we have been told that is connected with the making of good blood, which is equals life. And so today I want us to make something very simple. And that is we are going to make some uh, broccoli in coconut sauce. Ever tried that? Have we ever tried that? We have never tried that. But it is one of the simplest uh, recipes that we have around. So broccoli in uh, coconut sauce. And uh, because we are told that we cook and present, we cannot just eat coconut in coconut, uh, broccoli in coconut sauce alone. We are going to have something in the side to accompany it. And there's something in the side, we are going to make some uh, rice sticks, some rice sticks or rice bars or rice nuts. You can call them all those names. So we have rice sticks, rice uh, bars, rice, uh, snacks depending on the shape that you make them and uh, that is what we are going to have and so we are going to start with the coconut uh, and the broccoli in the coconut sauce that is what we are going to start with and so from the name we know that the first ingredient is what broccoli how many of us have uh, tasted broccoli before yeah a good number of us. And uh, you know, broccolis are one of the best, best vegetables that God gave us. One of the, as we are told, is one of the vegetables that contain proteins. They have anti cancer properties. They have vitamin C. They have vitamin K. They have a lot of minerals. And so, and no, I know that someone is going to tell me that um, where we come from, we do not have broccoli. True? So we are not going to, uh, to, to practice the recipe. Is that true? Do we plant carrots in our home? Because one thing is that if you are going to be a cook, and work in hygienic restaurants. All the hygienic restaurants should have farms, should have gardens, organic gardens. And if you have a small organic gardens, the broccoli is just grow like this, like the normal uh, spinach, like the normal Swiss uh, that we have around. If you have go walked along the, the, the garden, I'm sure you have seen broccoli up there. They are just doing well. And there is nothing special that we can do. We just put organic manure and then we plant the seedlings, and that is it. And God provides the rain. If the rain is not there, maybe you can water them once in a while. And then you will have after like three months, because those one are two months and a half, and they are already, already uh, producing. So you can have your broccoli. Do not wait to go to the market because we realize that in the market, most of them they are highly sprayed and those may not be good for our health. So 
you live here, if you have a small garden, go find some seeds and go try to plant broccoli. And in uh, our training, we are going to realize that uh, broccoli is one of the versatile foods that you have. You can make a lot of things from it. Those people that we were with in your UBs, you remember what we did with the broccoli? Steve? You bet? Livia? We baked. And the chance? They were not in class. They're not good students. We <laughs> can. We made some broccoli fritters in the UK. It is one of the best recipes that we made uh, broccoli fritters. And today we have another different recipe. So we have so many recipes that you can do with broccoli. You can bake them, you can make rice uh, broccoli that you just grate them, these ones, and then you cook them. You can make what we call um, patties, broccoli patties. You grate these ones and mix it with uh, some cooked uh, smash. Uh, potatoes, Irish potatoes, and then you make some good shapes and then you bake them and then you have some nice meat. So today we're just going to make a sauce. And then the other things that we have, we have some uh, Irish potatoes. They're already boiled with some salt. Don't overboil them. We want them still firm. We have some carrots, cubed. Some carrots. Here we have some uh, green belly peppers, the hohos in Kenya, green belly peppers, and then we have some zucchini. You know zucchini or uh, gorgeous? Mm -hmm. Someone can just get one so that we, we know what it is. And then you. You find time, you walk through the garden, you see where the zucchinis are planted. It is in the family of the pumpkins. So it is something very easy also to plant. It does not require much, only the seed, the ground, some manure and some water, and then you're good to go. Two months, two months and a half, you did harvest. And the zucchini is another good vegetables that we have around. And so someone can get one zucchini from the room to, for us to see. Get one zucchini, go get. The other thing we have is uh, we have some chopped onions with uh, some leeks, you know, leek onions? Yeah, with some leek onions and some garlic, just put it together. Leek onions, some garlic, some uh, bulb or red onion together. The other thing we are going to use, these are red peppers. And then we have some tomatoes. And then we have a cup of coconut milk. This is just fresh blended coconut milk. Maybe I will show you later. And then we have some cilantro or coriander leaves. We have some salt. We have some cooking oil. We have some uh, paprika, that is smoked paprika. You know paprika? Yeah, so this is not cayenne, this smoked paprika, that is what we are going to use today. And then we have some paprika, P A P R I K A, paprika. So that is all we need for this sauce. So what we are going to do, uh, 
so what we are going to do is start to make the sauce. We start making the sauce. Yeah, this is zucchini. It is in the family of uh, pumpkins, cucumbers. It grow like cucumber, but it is soft. It does not have a lot of water like the cucumbers. The same thing. Cucumbers, you can eat it raw. And this one has a lot of recipes that you can make from it. You can bake it, you can make uh, cakes, zucchini cakes. You can make some cookies from this. You can make a lot of things from this one. And so it is another good vegetable that you can try to plant wherever you are, and then you're going to enjoy. You can also take raw sal salads, you can juice it, and there's many more that you can do with it. I know we learn every day. You can go and learn when you plant it and learn, ask God, what can I do with my zucchini? And God is going to provide what you're going to do with it. And so I want to, I need some paper. So we are starting. This is eggs, some garlic, and some onion together. We have uh, tomatoes by just putting everything together. And uh, I hope you understand we are, we are doing this. We do not want to heat our oil so much. So I'm putting everything together. We put some some of the carrots. We leave the others. Even the chili peppers, we just put a little. We leave the others. to add some salt. So we are going to let this cook and see everything becomes soft. And while it is cooking, we are going to do the next recipe while it, that cooks, and that is to make our rice sticks. Mm 
Want to make our race six? And from the word race six, we know that uh, our main ingredient is what? Rice. And in this case, we are going to use the brown rice. So we are going to use brown rice flour. The flour, don't cook the rice. If you cook it, it is going to bring something different. So uh, you have your dry rice, you grind it. You can take to the portion room and grind it. They do that. Or if you have a good blender, just use your blender and grind it. Like this one, I've just grinded it today using a blender, and that is what we are going to use, okay? So if you don't have a blender, don't work. just take to the market. I need to do that. I take to the market maybe one kg, and they grind it for me, and I come back and use it. And so we are going to use some rice flour. This is brown rice flour. So brown rice flour. We are going to use some uh, corn flour or corn starch. Just a little to help in binding. Corn starch. And uh, those people that were in our UGs, we learn how to make some corn starch at home. It is very easy. You just take your corn. Either if you want the brown one, you can use the brown ones. Ah, not the brown, but the yellow ones or the white ones. So take your dry corn. Make sure it is a dry one and soak it in water overnight. And then in the morning you do what you blend. When you blend, you're going to see, remove those large particles, and then let the meal, the meat that you're going to get from the blending settle in, uh, maybe in a basin or a bowl, a big bowl, settle for some like six to eight hours. So when you come back after eight hours, you find that there is a, a clear liquid at the top, and at the bottom, you will have some, um, some solid, some solid, uh, something like some solid white thing. So you are going just to remove the water and that solid thing, you just put it maybe in a tray and then take it outside to dry or maybe bake in a oven in a low bit and then dry and then you grind it in a oven and you have your cornstarch or cornstarch. And the cornstarch, you can use it in baking, use it in making soups, you can use it in thickening your soups, your stews, or that. There's a lot you can do with it. The other thing we are going to add is some salt. We're going to be cooking the sauce as we cook this one. We make this one. Just put some little salt and some coconut flour, or you can use uh, some coconut paste. Or if you do not have coconut flour and you have the skated coconut, the skated coconut, you can grind it and have something smooth, or you can use both. This is organic coconut milk powder or organic flour. Just use it a little. Not much. Then some desiccated coconut. Or if you have coconut flakes, you can use, just grind them a bit and then use. And now with this one, the good thing about rice is that uh, with this recipe, you can change it to many things. You can make cookies. If you want to make cookies, just add some sugar, some sweetener. 
or maybe some sweeteners, some cinnamon, and you have some rice cookies, just like that. But this time round, we want to have something that we can take with us too. So we are not going to add sugar. We are not adding sugar. And then from here, you can add some water. Just enough. Let me check this one. Is ready? Now what we are going to do, we are going to blend this one, okay? Yeah, we are going to blend it. I hope you are following up the recipe. If you have just the normal blender, please don't put it uh, when it's still hot. Let it cool first. Now at this point, we are going to add some a uh, half of the French potatoes, not all of them. Milk. Uh, milk. This is coconut, not all of it. And some little water. That is it. Now, after blending, the last thing we are going to do is return our cooking pot. The things that you remained with, those are the some of the zucchini, some carrots, everything that remained. And now you have broccoli. You add some oil. Some little salt because we have already added some salt to the food. This is the point to add our paprika. Awesome. You see, even if you omit, if you omit the sauce part, you can still have some nice broccoli vegetables. They still look nice. That is what you want, something that is looking nice. So the other thing now is 
ada resus. Lastly, add the main segment. You let it simmer for some minutes. Now we come back to our rice sticks. I was forgetting this. This one that is the time to have the So back to the rice sticks, you know where we are? So you have hardened your rice flour, some coconut flour, and some coconut, the stated coconut, and then you had some salt, and now some water. Just simple as that. You don't need a lot of things. And then you just mix that together. So you will add water a little by little until you have some nice consistency, like the one that you are going to have here. Something should not be so dry. At the same time, it should not be so smooth. And this one is done. You see the consistency? Yeah, that's one. Now from this part, Maybe if you do not have something to make it, like the one that they're going to use, you can make your yours a little bit hard so that it, you'll be able to shape it. But you, if you have something to help you shape it, at this point, you do not need to have a lot of flour. So what I'm going to use, from this point is just we are going to bake it just like that and uh i need just uh, a tray we are going to prepare our tray someone can help me with the a tray just somewhere there and i'm going to use this one you know this thing have you ever seen it no the tray for baking we have never seen this thing. We, we have seen it. The big. This, yeah. This one, they 
you have eaten that uh, decorated cake before? Yeah. yeah, they use these things to decorate your cakes. And so you can use these things even to decorate your homemade vegetarian cakes, okay? So what we are going to do, I want to tell you the name later, it's just escaping my mind. You just put your, your dough inside. Like that. If you want to have some different nice shapes, this thing comes with uh, some shapes that you can use. You just put them there. You see? And this is what they use to decorate the eggs. So we are going to use this one. This is our, our pan. So you can use this thing or you can use without. Now making the system I'm going to use without. What you're going to see is just Someone can help me hold the tree. Yeah. So what you're going to do is just see about this. And then you can make some different uh, shapes. Not a must to be like a stick, you can make some nice circles with it. And that is it. So from here, you just go and take, and then you just go with the shape. So we are just going to let it stop at that. I just wanted them to see. And uh, I did some preparation for that. If they fight with bath, you 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 make your dough to be a little more hard and not so hard. So our sauce, our stew is ready. So the last thing we are doing is after baking or after cooking. We are going to present the food, okay? So the last part we are going to do is present our meal at the table, and that is what I, I'm going to do. I'm going to close I wash my hands. So we have some little ones. I want to present now.
things uh, about like this. Operators, you can make your own at home using some some red. You can use some red jalapeno chilies or some red uh, peppers. You just roast them and dry and grind. That is how you can do. The test is going to be different, mm. but you can try. I've not tried it with uh, so, uh, so you So we have our source. These are some family leaves just for garnishing. And again, finally, you can find them from the seeds. So we are going to present this. These are fennel, fennel. Uh, fennel leaves. So someone can get me the small bowl, the, the smallest, the small bowl. Okay. Just rinse once and rinse one and come with it.
So you can either choose to present it like this. Like this. Or So you have seen, and uh, just tell me if someone comes to your restaurant when you serve him for a, a meal like this or you work in a restaurant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, you serve your served such a meal. You're going to take it and appreciate and be happy and come again to the same restaurant. <laughs> that is what we want. That is what we are looking forward to. Simple meals uh, using the available ingredients. You see everything is just from the garden, okay? Just simple foods. And then we have some nice not the normal foods. What we also want is to break away from the normal foods. Ugali, vegetables, rice, rice just boiled and presented, some sweet potatoes, some cassava. We want to break away, just have a break and then have something different, something that is nice, and at the same time, something that is sweet. So what do we say about this? Amen. So we thank the Lord for this. And uh, we are going to pray 
and, and finish and meet again tomorrow at the same time, same place. So we are going to pray. Before we pray, uh, no, this one I just read it to you. You just prepare and serve the meals. They do not use they do not use an east or anything that you have to wait maybe for about eight hours. You just take them straight from the oven. Yeah. Any other question? Okay, we can pray. We thank you Lord for this opportunity. We have learned how to prepare a just single meal from the simple foods that you have provided in nature. Lord, we pray that our learning here may not be in vain, and these simple skills may be filled in us and make us uh, shine with a light that it is only the Holy Spirit will illumine us with, and this light may draw even more to you. We thank you for this food. And even as we are going to partake of it later, Lord, we pray that you will bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.